And good evening everyone, Carlos here for a new episode of What's Up in Archaeology. Uh, today we're going to tackle another um, hypothesis of the extinction of the Neanderthals. And um, a new study has been published in um, uh, the, science, the journal Science and uh, we're going to discuss it. It was published on April, well it's not new, it's a, uh, a few years old but it's still interesting. Um, it is just one of the many, many um, uh, uh, hypotheses that are out there that have been flouted, and uh, we shall also talk about some of the technology that between the uh, H um, Neanderthalensis and H Sapien transition in Europe. So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, we are going to start as I share this. Uh, the article and here we are um, as I was saying the article is from science uh, it's in the description and uh, the title sophisticated tools may have spelt doom for Neanderthals well uh, nearly 42,000 years ago ancient hu humans began wielding a new kind of Stone Age tool kit in southern Europe one of Excuse me. One that included perforated shell ornaments. Um, it's not a toolkit, by the way. That is a um, adornment and long-pointed stone bladelets, uh, blades uh, that were thrown long distance atop spears, uh, spear points. So a nice. Uh, uh, talked about Anne Gibbons before. It's one of my. She's uh, she's appeared. She writes for, of course, science, but. Uh, there are things that you could um, better. How is my sound, guys? Um, I think it's okay. Um, just put this away. Uh, the proof from the new state-of-the-art analysis of two baby teeth, fa uh, two teeth found in 1976 and 1992 at separate archaeological sites in northern Italy at the time. Northern Italy. At the time, researchers were unable to tell whether they belonged to modern humans or Neanderthals. And these are the two tooth teeth in question. Um, they are digital image of the, the study of the two baby teeth. One, the one on the left is from Bombrini. The one on the right is from Grotta di Fumane, uh, and they show the, that they belong to modern humans, not Neanderthals. And that is a a significant thing. They had the, this confusion because um, since 19, 2015 to now, we have better understood the at mixing of uh, Neanderthals and modern or NAS that um, are becoming becoming more apparent in this time frame around the 42,000 years mark when between as you all, as we know from my past videos uh, modern us modern humans began began uh, streaming into Europe around about the 40 ish 45 50,000 year mark more or less States are still evo uh, evolving. We are evolving. We are getting more data on the earlier dates, uh, but we know that this was an established date. Uh, uh, modern humans, H. sapiens sapiens, were established in most of what is now uh, at least West Central uh, Europe, and uh, not too long later in southern Europe basically France, Spain, Italy, Portugal and uh, and uh, Greece and other other parts of southern Europe so uh, getting back to the article um, at that time researchers were unable to tell that they belong to modern humans and animals but the new study that was done, uh, led by um, an international team led by Stefano Banazzi from the University of Bologna in Italy. It used a three-dimensional imaging, uh, digital imaging method, including computerized tomography scans to measure the thickness of the enamel of one of the teeth, and found that the uh, that was found in the collapsed roof shelter of Riparo Bombrini in the western Ligurian Alps. Uh, the enamel was thick, as in modern humans, rather than relatively thin, as in Neanderthals. So that is, so if you guys ever uh, study it, find a tooth, uh, if you see the enamel is thick, it's us. If it's thin, 
it's uh, Neanderthals. I'm money jacking. You need a specialized uh, equipment to actually measure its favor. And you shouldn't. You should hand it into to uh, competent authorities, archaeologists, archaeologists, museums, etc., etc., anthropologists, etc. But uh, don't do it yourself. Uh, the authors of the report um, are from online today in science. The new radiocarbon dates on animal bones and charcoal from the site suggest that mo the modern child lived there approximately 40,710 to 35,640 years ago. That's a little bit of a quite a wide error for ma marginal error, margin error, error, of, uh, you know, the ma error of mar marginal error thing that you use to. That's uh, 5,000 years, quite a bit. 5,000 years is a long time, but. You probably the, the, well they did indirect um, measurements they because they couldn't if you do m use the teeth to uh, to date you will destroy all parts of it and at the moment it's still a little bit too much of a sample so they are trying to reduce the amount of sample they can use to date but it's still I think it's still considerable. So, um, the researchers were, uh, were able to extract, extract maternal inherited mitochondrial DNA from the other child's tooth from Grotta di Fuma Fumani. Uh, the cave of Fumani. It's not, I don't know what it, the Fumani means, but it's a place. A uh, cave in western Lessinia Mountains, and that dated from 41,110 to 38,500. It's a bit better. The margin are very smaller. Uh, when researchers at the Max Planck Institute of Urban Evolutionary Arth uh, Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, the, I, I, these are, these are very, very competent and very, very accurate. Any work they do, they are very dedicated. They are what's the word? They they're good. They're good. So yeah, they are good. And so they sequenced the uh, mitochondrial DNA and compared it to ten ancient modern humans and ten Neanderthals. They found that it belonged to a known lineage of mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA known as the haplogroup R, which had also been found in 45,000-year-old modern human bones, uh, found in riverbank near Umstisim, Siberia. So, um, yeah, these were part of the, the original movers into Europe from the Middle East, uh, that's the one of the one of the la the last wave of of uh, H sapien movements into expansion. Um, so yeah, um, the identification of the remains is is uh, long uh, is the long-awaited confirmation that modern humans made advanced tools known as proto or ignition tools. Now, what are proto? What is the ignition toolkit? I'll show you basically what it is. The origination, origination toolkit, the origination culture, is a tool making industry and artistic tradition of the Upper Paleolithic Europe. Uh, I said the dates around 46,000 to 20, uh, what's it, 26, 27, around that 1,000 years. That was quite a bit. And you have, um, um, and we know that uh, these toolkits uh, superseded the Masturian technology. The Masturian technology, I've talked about it before, so I'm not going to repeat too much, are uh, associated with associated it with uh, Neanderthals exclusively. And um, there is the the, um, the Ignatian toolkit is contemporary with another uh, another um, uh, culture, tool culture, toolkit tool assemblage called the Perigordian and um, the Perigordian is basically uh, character, uh, the difference is it has a lot of, of um, uh, barbed spear points you know like they use to fish um, for fishing and so on uh, inverted spear points they had many uh, barbs like in whaling and sealing etc uh, they so they assumed that they were that they were used. This is the Perigordian, not the uh, the Ignatian. They were assumed to that they fished a lot. So maybe it's um, uh, a subset. We don't know what it is because it, because it is contemporary with the Ignatian culture. 
um, it could be a subset of it. So we will soon see. This is me speculating a little bit. Uh, there's, I don't have proof, so I'm not going to use it as proof. Uh, but uh, it is uh, that's how characteristically it is characteristics of it. Uh, here are some of them. If you guys want to see what they, what I'm talking about, some of the origination tools, not the pergonium. We're talking about the originations, the ones that were that were supposed to have been used to um, uh, uh, modern humans, us introduced and replaced the Neanderthal Musturian technology. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, long blades and flakes. Um, so um, a lot of the the, the toolkit has uh, bu burins. What is a burin? Burin is an engraving tool, but used to uh, to make uh, small holes. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, I'll try and zoom in as much as I can. Oh, the, the, um, the image doesn't zoom in, damn it. Uh, but I have the link in the description, you can guys can see it. Many of these small blade, blade things, uh, these artifacts have whole, little holes in them. And uh, that's what a burin does. It makes holes, and it can be used to engrave wood, it can be used to work woodwork, work wood. It's like a small chisel set of chisels or a or an owl you know the the what you used to punch holes in it and the characteristics of this the technology used to make these tools is also new where the the Masturian technology the ones that Neanderthals used was direct percussion so you'd have a hammer stone uh, and you'd strike the core that you prepared directly while these tools were made by the punch method where you'd use indirect percussion They'd use some, some possibly in a um, uh, softer material, possibly antler, bone for sure. And after preparing the core, they'd, they'd use it basically like a chisel. Uh, you strike the chisel to, 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 um, to dislodge the blade that you want to, to get. That's a very, very, very precise method, control method of producing stone tools. And as you can see, they are very, very consistent and of high quality. You could get quite long blades. And then the blades were not used exclusively blades because that was other technology. That even could become later. Uh, but in this case, the blades were then retouched and snapped and made into flakes. And as you can see, many of them here in the flakes. Uh, you have, have a look at them. Um, the, the the this links from ResearchGate. You can download a hell of a lot of, ar of articles, uh, complete articles. They are quite fascinating. I have them all, and feel free to um, to read them. Um, so that is basically a toolkit that was introduced, possibly introduced with modern humans, possibly because uh, there's still some dispute and. Um, but anyway, back to the article. Um, uh, the tools were eventually transformed into the so-called uh, origination version, class cla characterized, characterized by bones and antler tools, ornaments, and fugitive art. Figurative art. Yes, um, I mentioned last week that uh, Neanderthals also produced art. So, um, but the art that the, that the that the origination people, let's call them origination people because that's a culture they followed, that they practiced, um, produced, uh, began, were the first to produce those uh, Venus figurines. Um, do I have it here? No, but I have it in the other, my other link. Let me just open up this so I can close. Sorry about that, guys. It's... I think it's this one, yes, it's the Britannica article. Um, I showed you because the Britannica article has has some of the the artwork like this. This is an, an, uh, um, a stylized figurine, a Venus figurine, carved in ivory from the Origination Gravetian. Uh, this is later Origination from. Um, uh, I've talked about uh, Dalny Vestenica in Moravia, Czech, Repu uh, Czech Republic, and uh, 
the these uh, portable artworks are uh, the Venus type figurines that you find not just them but um, you also have the Venus of Willendorf and what's that other one that has the, the just a the face uh, these are all associated possibly associated with a, a belief system on fertility that's how they've been inter uh, in, um, interpreted as uh, so they did a lot of work and also cave paintings of course we have some here from um, from La Chaux, the Grotte La Chaux in Montignac in France uh, by the way the names of these cultures uh, the Gravetian, the Aurignacian, Mosturian, uh, Perigordian etc etc they come from localities in France the first archaeologists that found them found those particularly um, uh, first found that in, in the cave, for example, in the cave of, of, uh, of in the Perigord, and so uh, they called them Perigordian. Uh, origination came from Saint Arig Arig Ari uh, uh, Saint. Oh, I can never get my my um, my uh, tongue around the names. The, um, where's that place? Where's that place? I can't find that. Never mind. Um, uh, solution comes from Salutre. Mosturian comes from Le Mostur. It's a place in France, etc. So, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, all of most of them, except for older one, uh, which is African from older Vargoji in, Af in uh, Kenya, or is it well, Eastern Africa? Uh, or mostly French names because the earlier. Uh, Paleolithic archaeologists from this period, pre the Upper Paleolithic. Upper Middle and Early Paleolithic were French archaeologists. They really liked to compete and, f and uh, they dug up France. So, um, so basically, yes. Uh, oops, wrong one. What's this one? Um, so the conversion dates from the DNA fossils show that they were uh, also shows that they are now a period of overlap of at least 3,000 years between Neanderthals and modern humans. In that area, there is more, of course. Uh, says Jean-Jacques Hublin, paleoanthropologist of Max Planck. He's talking only about the the Italian sp specimens, not in general, because we have known that we lived among, we coexisted with Neanderthals longer in other places on Earth, in Europe and Middle and uh, even uh, Eastern Central Asia. So, uh, by the genetics. Uh, so if um, if it was uh, well, and although it wasn't as if Neanderthals were on the other side of the valley and modern humans were on the other waving their hands at each other every morning, they could have done that. Um, it says the uh, entry of modern humans into Europe may have played a part in Neanderthal extinction. Yes, yes, uh, definitely, and uh, that they were also uh, possibly that they were also becoming extinct in of them th themselves. There's other studies that showed that. So, um, and also contributed to the demise, says archaeologist Offer Bar Yosef. I've read him, he's very good. Bar Yosef is a very good archaeologist. I've, 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 he was one of my reading, com compulsory reading materials at university, so he's very good. And who was not involved in the study. It is quite possible that the efficient hunting technology gave a competitive edge to modern humans over Neanderthals. Yes, it could. But we've, I've talked about this more often. I just wanted to guys to show you the the origination toolkit. I'm going to try and show you all the um, the stone technologies that have that have um, been used by uh, humans and uh, other hominins since they have evolved. So we will talk about them in the coming weeks and months, etc. So I. I uh, hope you enjoyed this um, article and uh, we'll have another one soon but um, oops there we go, there we go. Uh, thank you all for the being on the chat thank you uh, it's always nice to be back it's back I'm back so basically so um, Yes, uh, thank you all, and um, I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, I'm...
cheerio guys and we will end it 